Buttons are one of the several components that are included in the VR Expansion plugin. You can see I've got some examples to show here, and then we'll hop into the blueprints later on to see how they function. But this first one actually shows off how the button works in general. So this one's laying on its side here, and it's massive, so that you can easily see what's going on. But essentially what's going to happen is my sphere collision on this controller is going to interact with this collision of the cylinder, and that's going to allow it to start moving. It's actually going to check first and see if I'm a valid overlap or not, which by default is in the C++ programming of the plugin, and it looks for a character or something that's attached to the character or that the character's holding. So normally it's going to be restricted to that. So once I push it and it checks that I'm a valid overlap, it's going to allow me to push it. And if I pass this engage depth here, it's going to change the state. So you can see it turned green there, and you can see the state changed in the print string. Now this is a toggle type stay button. And so it's going to stay at that engage depth instead of returning back to the original position. And it's also going to stay on, or true. Now when I push it again here, you can see that it won't allow me to push it past the depress distance. So that's what that sets. And then also it's already changed back to the off setting. And now when I release it again, it'll turn back to the original position. And then you'll also see in the print string the end interaction comes on as well. So some events that are firing is as soon as I interact with it and I'm valid, you get the begin interaction event. So you can fire off behavior at this point. You can again do it at the event that has state changed. And also, another event that's built in is that end interaction, which is when it returns to the resting position. So either here at the engage depth or back in the original position here, it fires that end interaction event. Not when you actually stopped interacting with it, but when it reaches that resting position. So here on these three buttons, you can see that there's the three different button types press, toggle return, and toggle stay. What these are here is press buttons will only activate when pressed all the way down past their engage depth, and then they will not stay anywhere but the initial resting position, and they will turn off immediately if they're not pressed down to their engage depth anymore. Toggle returns will return back to their resting position although their state will change once you go down all the way, so it'll stay green, but it will return back to that original resting position. Hit it again, same thing. Toggle stay buttons will turn on or turn the state to true, and then stay down at the engage depth, just like the button over there. Then you hit it again, and it comes back up, but it turns off every same time. Here what I'm doing is setting up some UMG widgets these little bars above these buttons. And on this one on the left, these are actually the same blueprint. I just changed the functionality in the two of them. So here on the left, when I push in the button, it'll increase this progress bar, this UMG widget here. And then at the max distance is max on the progress bar. Come out again, it returns, and it just follows along with where the button is. Here on the right, this is only going to increase the progress bar when it's at its engage depth. So I push it in, it's not going to change, but once I hit the top, it'll start filling up, release it, fill up, or only fill up when it's pushed in. And then you can fire whatever you want at any point, really. At this example, I'm showing that you can use a static object or anything you want to interact with the button if you turn on the skip overlap filter. So here this box is interacting with this press button without being attached to my character. It doesn't need to be. It can just be out in the world. That does work, but you do have to set that property, skip overlap filter, on the button itself. And this button as well is just a standard button for operating a door. And so they operate the same thing. So it's useful to know that. I set up this example to show how you might handle interacting with smaller buttons. So I have a conveyor belt at the bottom, and this box up top will actually spawn primitives once I hit one of these buttons, and it'll change the color depending on which color I hit here. But if you can see, my sphere collision here on the controller is a little bit too big to properly interact with these without maybe hitting one or two more than I want to at once. 
So what I did is I set up a box collision around here that will change the size and position of my sphere collision here while I'm inside of that. So you can see that it changes to smaller and a little bit more forward, which allows me to easier interact with these buttons. You can also see that it will change the color and also move the previous button that was on to the off position without me having to interact with it. You can also just turn them off. And it's just a nice way to also show how you can manually change the resting position and the current state of these buttons with the events that are included in the plugin. So now that we've taken a look at some of these, let's hop into the blueprints and see how they work. So the first example we had here was this uh, proto button, which just showed how the button works in general. If we open up the blueprint here, we can see that it's just a default scene root, the VR button itself, and then a plane for the engage depth and a plane for the max depress distance, as well as just text for both of those. If you wanted to add a VR button to any blueprint, you can just go to the Add Component tab and scroll all the way down. You've got the VR Expansion Plugin section here, and you can see the VR buttons right there. And that'll just add the VR button just like this. At that point, you're going to want to add a static mesh. That mesh's collision will then be the collision used to determine how it functions and what it interacts with. It's also important to note that with that mesh, the collision settings here, just on any static mesh, you need to make sure that these are going to work properly with what you want to interact with. So if you're ever having trouble where I'm not overlapping properly, it doesn't seem to be working, this is the place to check first. Specific to the VR button itself are these under the VR button component, these details here. Is enabled is whether or not you can actually interact with it at all. The button state is the true or false, whether or not it is engaged or not. Depress speed is how fast the button will return after it stops being interacted with. So how fast it will come back up from being depressed. The higher the number, the faster it will return to the original position or the engage depth after being pushed down. The depress distance is how far you can push the button until it stops. The higher the number, the further back you can push it. The button type is what we saw earlier with these. Press toggle return and toggle stay. You can just select either one. And keep in mind, you can also change these during runtime or at the start, anytime you want. Button axis is in which direction the button depresses. So on this one, we're on the Z axis, so it goes down but you can change that to the X or Y axis whenever you want. The engage depth is how far down it has to go before it will engage and change the button state. Now you want to make sure that the engage depth is either the same or less than the depress distance. Otherwise you won't be able to get to the engage depth. The min time between engaging is how long before it can interact again with that engage depth. So if you are hovering around the engage depth, it will wait, put a delay here on how long before it'll be like, okay, I'm gonna go from on to off to on to off. You can set that up in case you might be in a position where it's possible to be just hovering around that area. Skip overlap filtering is what we talked about with this example here, with this button that can be interacted with with this static mesh and not the character. In order to make that work, you need to change this to true. Otherwise, it will not recognize something that isn't a character or attached to the character. And it won't depress or engage at all. We have a replication tab as well, which just allows you to change whether or not the client and server can interact with it and change it, or just the server or the owner of the interacting primitive that's interacting with the button. Aside from that, there are also events that are included with this button. On button state changed, on button beginning interaction, and on button end interaction. We talked about that a bit with this already. You can see these here in the blueprint. Here what I'm doing on begin interaction is just printing a string just so you can see it. 
But note that you can also grab whoever is interacting with it, the actor or the component that is interacting with it. Again, this will not fire unless it's a valid overlap. End interaction is what happens when it reaches the engage depth or back to the original position as well, but not when the controller or whatever is interacting with it currently moves away from it. That's not what will fire it. It will only fire once it reaches the resting position. On button state changed, you get a new Boolean, the button state, which you can access at any time as well. That will change every time the button is pushed to the engage depth. And again, you can grab the actor or component that's interacting with the button. Here I'm just changing the color of the material that I have applied to it and printing out a string, true or false. Some other useful things you can do with the VR button, which can all be found here if you right click and type in VR button, you will see that we have the VR button component and then we have these five different uh, functions that we can use. Is button in use will tell you whether or not the button is interacted with. So it'll return true if begin interaction has been called, but it hasn't called end interaction yet. Once it calls end interaction, this will turn to false. You can also check and see if you have a valid overlap from the component that is interacting with it, and that will shoot out a Boolean for you. You can reset the initial button location. What that essentially means is that if you were to, say, press the button in, if you were to hold this button in and push it down here and then call that reset initial location function, it would then set this position instead of that original position to where it is by default. So then you'd be able to push it in further. And so when you interacted with it again, it would start from here instead of starting from back here. Set button state is a function that allows you to manually change the button state. So this is where you can manually call and say, let's change the button state to true or false. And then you can skip or make sure it calls the button changed event. And you can also have it snap into position, which is snapping into that new position for say a toggle stay button would go to the engage depth or to the original position. If you have this unchecked, it won't snap it will use the depress speed, this here, to move it as slow or as fast as this is set back to that engage depth or the original position. You can also use set button to resting position to go into that engage depth or original position. By default, it will snap, but you can also have it lurp into that position, which is more that slow progression using the depress speed. So that covers this button here and the different functions that you can use. If you'd like to know how some of the other examples in this video work, let me know. But as of now, that is all.